In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about recording Teams meetings. Hello, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about recording Teams meetings. Um, now, there's multiple reasons why you might want to record a Teams meeting, and that could be that you want to follow up on a meeting afterwards. Maybe it's actually for somebody else. So quite often, we see people recording Teams meetings because not everyone can participate in a meeting, say, colleagues on holiday and they want to go back and watch afterwards. I found from my own personal experience it's great to record as much as possible especially when you're really busy and you've got a lot of different projects because it might be that you discuss a project but actually it's going to be a couple of weeks until you're properly getting started with it so you can go back to that initial handover point watch the recording and get yourself back up to speed with what was happening. Also it's important to start getting into the habit of recording meetings because we're moving into the era of Microsoft Copilot. And our Microsoft Copilot needs you to either record the meeting or at least enable the transcript uh, to be activated, which is essentially just recording what people are saying, not as audio, but just documenting it down as text. But we'll take a little look at that in a moment about the different options about recording things. Then we're also gonna look at once you've actually completed your recording, where you can go and find that video and how you can share it with other people as well. So let's start off by actually looking at how do we start a recording. Now, in our Microsoft Teams meeting, you can see here um, I've got a few different options across the top. But to get started, I actually need to click on this more options here. Now, the very top option is record and transcribe. Now, there's two different options we've got here. We've got start recording and we've got start transcription. Now, again, just to explain, start recording will record everything. It will record um, my webcam uh, and myself. It will record the audio and it will record the transcript as in what people are actually saying and it's sort of writing it down. Um, whereas Start Transcript won't record my webcam. It won't record um, the audio. It will only record what people are saying as a written document. Now, when I click on Start Recording, it will only start recording from the point that I click on this button. A common misconception is that people think that it will start the recording from the beginning of the meeting. It won't do that. So say for example, you're wanting to record a project handover and everyone knows that sometimes people run late to meetings, um, sometimes people arrive early to meetings and there can be a little bit of informal chat first, just talking about the weather or what you got up to at the weekend or something like that. And those are the types of things we don't really want to be included in the recording. So quite often, as a, again, as a cultural thing, is to get into the habit of only clicking that start record button once you know that you're going to get into the swing of talking about the actual project or what it is that you wanted to record the meeting about. Again, um, we'll talk about how we stop it in a second, but also it's worth stopping the recording when you think the kind of the actual meeting's done. Because again, it's a very common thing that at the end of a meeting, once it's all wrapped up, um, quite often. Um, you'll, you'll do a final 60 seconds, two minutes of, oh, what have you got planned for the weekend or whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, and again, you might not necessarily want that to be included. So you can you can cut the kind of recording at that point. So I want to start the recording. So I'm going to click on start recording. Now, a little pop-up message is going to come up and say starting recording and transcription. Then once the recording actually starts, it then says started by you. Let everyone know that they're being recorded and transcribed. So it's worth, uh, again, for people who aren't maybe used to having Teams meetings recorded and things like that, actually just letting them know that they are being recorded. It's just a polite thing to do. Um, quite often, even before I start the recording, I quite often just make sure that I get everyone just to sort of say, uh, I'll often ask a question to say, is everyone okay if I start the recording now? Um, and just hopefully get a few people to say, yep, yeah, sure, that's fine. Blah, 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 just so everybody, again, is comfortable that the recording is about to commence. We can tell that the recording started because across the top left-hand corner, we can see this little red light button, which is appearing. Um, and it's a bit like us on a, a radio studio where it's live and it's got the red kind of um, button there. So everyone knows it's currently live and recording. We can also tell by hovering over it, it says recording started by Dougie Wood. Now, it will always say who started that recording. So again, you can always go back and 
or see audit wise that you can see who started that recording um, and, and also the transcription is automatically started once you start recording a meeting as well. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. That timer here is the amount of time that the meeting has been going on, not how long the recording has been going on. Again, I see people getting confused by this because if you remember what I was saying before, the recording will only start from the point of when you click that recording button. It won't start from the very beginning of the meeting. However, that timer has started from the very beginning of this meeting. So don't get too worried about that. Some people think that that means that it's it's recording longer than they, they thought it was going to. Now, once we're sort of happy with that recording, if you click back on the three dots and click on record and transcribe, now you'll see that it says stop recording or stop transcription. So again, we can either choose to stop the recording completely and that's everything or only stop the transcription if we wanted to. Now, um, stopping the recording, I should also mention something else which people get confused by is when um, people leave the meeting and how that will stop the recording. Sometimes I've heard it where people think that if the person who started the recording leaves the meeting, it will automatically stop the recording. And that is false. That is not true. Now, sometimes people get into the habit of not going and stopping the recording, which is fine as long as, and I'll caveat this, as long as that you know that people are all going to leave the meeting quite quickly after it's ended. The reason why I say this is that the recording will continue until the last person has left the team's meeting. So say, for example, I'm in a meeting, I start the recording and I've got uh, two colleagues with me in the meeting. Once um, I've left and then the, the first colleague leaves, it's at the point of when the second colleague leaves and the meeting is ended, then the recording stops. Now, the reason why I say this is that I've seen quite a lot of times, especially in companies where, um, what's a polite way of saying this, there's people who are technically challenged, essentially, and they're not so familiar with using Microsoft Teams. And for some reason, after a meeting, they, they don't exit the meeting. They just leave the meeting running for an hour, two hours, things like that, until they next need to come and use Microsoft Teams to realize, oh, I'm still in that meeting. Um, and that means then you've then got a recording which is like two hours long. So it's gonna be a huge file, it's gonna take ages for it to render and finish. Um, <clears throat> and again, that's not a good habit. So if you've got people working in that kind of way, I would suggest you get into the habit of going and turning off the recording manually. If people are quite familiar with using Microsoft Teams, and they will quickly end a meeting, then you're fine um, just to everyone leave the meeting and it'll stop the recording for you. But as I say, you can manually stop it. Clicking on record and transcribe, then clicking on um, stop recording, it will confirm you to say, are you sure you wanna stop recording and transcript? And I'm gonna say, yep, I wanna stop it now. So once it's clicked stopped, you'll notice that it'll say, you stopped recording. If you change your mind, you can start them again anytime. Now, you can start that recording again, but remember that it's not, it won't have captured anything that has been said since it was stopped and started again. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is because when I was saying earlier on that it's a good habit to try and keep the recordings as short as possible by starting them when you, when you think that the meeting and what you're going to be discussing uh, that's relevant to the recording is going to begin, start the recording then. And I also said that you can stop it at the end when you think that the meeting's done and there's nothing else to be discussed about the requirements or what's important about the meeting um, because you're going to talk about the weather or what you're going to do at the weekend for the last two minutes of the meeting. If, for example, something was to come up that was of importance at the end of the meeting, someone said, oh, oh sorry, Dougie, I really forgot. I should have told you X, Y, and Z that's when sometimes it's worth restarting the recording again. But remember, it won't have captured what they just said. So quite often I would start a recording again, purely just to say, oh, Joe Bloggs, um, just as uh, you just said to me then that you wanted me to send you the document uh, next week for X, Y, Z, blah, blah, whatever it was. And I've then documented it back down in the recording. And then anything else that we need to before we finish off that meeting. So that's just worth knowing that you can start and stop the recording as many times as you like, but it's only going to capture 
during the period of time when you've got that red um, sort of live recording icon that's buzzing at the top. But how do we now go and get that recording? So what we need to do is open up our Microsoft Teams app. So just our normal kind of Microsoft Teams, go into the chat feature on the left hand side. And then under the chats, you'll see recent meetings. And this will be alongside all of the kind of one to one chats that you've been having with people. You'll see the name of the meeting and like a little meeting icon. And by selecting on that, you'll then see um, the recording will have been saved there. Now, if it's just after the meeting, especially if it's a very long meeting, it can take time for that recording to process. So maybe come back a, a, an hour or so later. So if I just jump into the Microsoft Teams, and then I can see in my chat areas, I can see this recent meeting, which is meeting with Dougie Wood. And then I can see here, um, I've got all of the kind of the, the bits I need, which is the recording, the transcription. I can see anything that was shared or, or related to the breakout meeting rooms during that meeting. But here's my recording. Now all I need to do is click on these three dots here um, and I can click on get a link. Now, all I would then need to do is click on that copy button and I can share that link with um, people to watch the recording, or I can click to open it myself and I can actually watch this recording back um, in sort of live time. So you can see here um, the, the meeting that I've then recorded. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel for more Microsoft related top tips. If you've got any questions at all, drop them in the comments feed below and drop the video a like. If you need any professional services or help, deploying or adopting Microsoft Teams, there's a link in my bio to contact me or in the description of this video below. Thank you.